changed. This isn't nullification of the dollar. The dollar will still be there. We just want another option in case something happens to the dollar, right? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Ron's Basement. We have the honor of being joined again by Pat Holland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative. There is a movement taking hold across the country where states are taking legislative action to allow their citizens to regain gold and silver as legal tender. Might I remind you that was outlined in the U.S. Constitution by our founding fathers. There's a lot going on, a lot of moving pieces. Big developments in just the last couple of weeks as lo alone. We have states that are moving to eliminate the sales tax initially on gold and silver, but a host of other states are actually taking legislative action to have gold and silver returned as legal tender. After that long introduction, we want to say hello to Mr. Pat Holland from the Missouri Freedom Initiative. Hi, Pat. How you doing? Hey, good morning. Good to see you again, Ron. Thank you for having me back in the basement today. It's, it's uh, raining outside. Hey, I want to say something really cool to all of your viewers. Yeah. Today, when we're recording this video, Ron hit 15,000 subscribers <laughs> on this right. day that we're doing this video. So cool, well, been, cool stuff. I appreciate you saying that, Pat. And uh, I appreciate my viewers and uh, everybody who's joining us right now. So thank you. Thank you. So you what, what's the latest? I guess we'll start with the sales tax, right? Is it Mississippi? Mississippi. Uh, Okay. Yep, but also, too, this morning, it's hot off the wire. Wisconsin has also gotten through the House on getting rid of sales tax as well. Wow. Uh, so, and once again, these aren't signed by governors. These are, we're following these legislative actions as they're going through the steps. Mississippi okay. has gone both through the Senate and the House to get rid of sales tax. Once again, the first step to make gold and silver legal tender. Very important step. So if those states have, uh, you know, sales tax on gold and silver, they have to start there. And Mississippi has made tremendous progress in a very short period of time. Um, so this is exciting stuff for Mississippi. Now, Wisconsin, hot off the wire, just came off the wire, uh, I believe, late last night. Uh, they got through one of their houses already with uh, getting rid of sales tax on gold and silver. But even more, let me tell you, uh, I, a little birdie told me that Idaho just filed this morning. Idaho just filed their version of what we call SB 100, or, or basically <laughs> turning gold and silver into legal tender is uh, being filed right now in Idaho as we're making this video. No wow. kidding. <clears throat> and to make matters even more interesting, because of the people who watch Ron's Basement, <laughs> We've looks like uh, it's uh, it's already been submitted now, not filed, but people from your channel. There's a guy from North Carolina who has wow. sent to his rep and his senator and also a guy from Florida who is starting the process to work with his rep and his senator. So we might have two more states here real soon, all because of Ron's basement. So thank <laughs> you, Ron. That I uh, I appreciate that. So I guess we really can make a difference, Pat. Yes, is we that can. Correct? You know, and, that and is I absolutely wanna, correct. And and I want to interject one thing. Uh, I forgot to mention we were chatting before the video, uh, but I, there was an article on Kitco yesterday uh, regarding this. Uh, you know, the forty two states that that have eliminated sales tax. I want to quote this from this Kitco article about the eight remaining states. Uh, mm -hmm. Says gold and silver's path to regain their luster as sound money continues to move forward with several states looking to approve legislation that would remove the sales tax. According to a report from the Sound Money Defense League, out of the eight states that, that still charge a sales tax on gold and silver, five, Mississippi, Maine, Kentucky, Wisconsin, and New Jersey are considering bills to end the tax this year. They so, missed Minnesota. Minnesota okay. has legislation to get rid of sales tax on gold and silver as well. It's actually okay. in the in their system right now. So, so it sounds Sound like Money Defense League forgot that one. Okay, so it sounds like the sales tax issue has has really or elimination of sales tax has really taken hold across the yep. country. We'll be left with one or two states uh, or three states possibly by the end of the year. 
Yep. For those of you watching Ron's basement right now, um, please watch to the end of this because I've got more important information about what we're doing in the state of Missouri. But what Ron said is very key. What Ron just told you right now is actually critical information. Literally any state that has sales tax on gold and silver is trying to get rid of it this year. 2023 remember our first interview ron we were talking about the pivot how pivotal 2023 is yes. you're starting to see this now all these states want to want to basic and, and by the way this isn't nullification of the dollar the dollar will still be there we just want another option in case something happens to the dollar right right so and and that's <laughs> the way it should be framed you know uh in in the real world you have a choice you know kind of you know, Coke or Pepsi, you know, if you want a choice, you know, if you're a smoker, you know, Marlboro or Camel, there's right. always choices out there. But choice for money has been denied us. And it's unconstitutional that they've done what they've done. And that's key to remember, sorry mm -hmm. to interject this. I think sometimes it's easy for people in this movement to feel like they're were fringe. This was in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'll shut that's up. Right. Yep, you're absolutely correct. So basically, uh, states have to do this because, you know, Dr. Ron Paul has been trying to do this on the federal level for decades, decades. They're, they're, you're not going to get it done at the federal level, gang. This is what the Missouri Freedom Initiative is all about, is states taking back their power via the 10th Amendment. This is what we do. This is what our organization does. And we have made, I mean, we're not going to get into everything we've done here today because we're talking about gold and silver. That's our initiative yeah. for 2023. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 2021, I mean, you know, we did the Second Amendment Preservation Act. Uh, mm -hmm. So those who are familiar with that and how Missouri got it done better than any other state is because of grassroots. So we'll right. talk about grassroots in a little and, bit here, but go and, ahead. Well, and, 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 and I think that's important for the viewers to remember as well. This is big, big news. It's a major movement going on across the country. Revolution. It will, it's a revolution. Revo, it's a revolution, but it, mm -hmm. the revolution will not be televised, right? I mean, that's, and right. that's important to remember that just because this isn't on the top you know, front page of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch or the Des Moines Monitor or, or the lead story on the CBS Evening News, this is going on. And it's maybe not a story that uh, the mainstream uh, financial world wants to be uh, heavily reported, but it's happening and it's real. Yes, it is. And it's happening in real time. Yeah. Uh, so you know, actually coming on to uh, Ron's basement channel has helped the process. You know, we got two other states, it looks like that we're going to, you know, make an attempt to get legislation started. And because of Ron's basement, that is big news in itself. Yeah. Um, and, and I will say it again, and I'm, and I'm going to shut up about it. Wall Street Silver refused this story. I want everyone here to know that Wall Street <clears throat> Silver, I contacted them multiple times. They refused to contact me back. They're clearly not interested in this story. Maybe, I, you know, I we know. can speculate as to why. Right. But Ron, uh, he when as soon as I contacted Ron, he was all over it. He wanted to be a part of this story. Now, to me, so, it's, so, it's so interesting. Uh, and I'll repeat one more time, it's in the Constitution. Of course, I'm a big proponent of the value of silver and gold. We could talk ad nauseum on that subject. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's something that, and I know that my audience has a keen interest in as well. Mm -hmm. um, I want, I want to, I want to, we, we talked about the sales tax now, mm -hmm. uh, which we've got a vast majority of the states on board with, or almost mm -hmm. all of them. But the second phase, and, and maybe uh, just as important, or you could argue even more important, is the actual recognition of legal gold tender. and silver as legal tender. And we have, uh, I think, three states that have passed that. Uh, we've got a host of other states that are in the legislative process. I think it brings the total up to 14. I want to shift over to Kansas for a minute. Uh, and I, I'm going to have you talk about Kansas, but I uh, but as I was reading about what's going on in Kansas, it reminded me of that that movie, The Wizard of Oz. And I couldn't help but 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 realize like, you know, the whole point of that movie was when they looked behind the curtain at the end, uh, The Wizard of Oz was kind of a phony. 
and mm-hmm. and um, and and I'm thinking maybe the people of Kansas, including Dorothy, right, are looking behind that curtain that's the Federal Reserve and the U.S. dollar, and seeing that it's a little phony, and they want to regain or reclaim their right to use silver and gold as money. Is that a is that a fair analogy? Pat? It is. It is because you know we're not we're not in Kansas anymore. Right. Uh, we're in we're, thirteen other the, states. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, no, what I meant by that is the dollar, you know, is, you know, Oz. It's not mm-hmm. real. Yeah. It, it's just not real, gang. The dollar is a dead instrument that was created basically so the government can print up as many as dollars as it wants for whatever projects it wants to go on. And I've talked about this for many years on the Truth, Money, and Freedom podcast. The reason we have central banks is because we can go to war. And, and I know that doesn't make sense. And I need to explain how you get from A to B on that. But that is, I don't want to do that with this episode, but it's absolutely true. Without being able to print money out of nothing, it is incredibly expensive and takes enormous resources and takes incredible risk to go to war. When you can print money out of nothing, you can create as many weapons as you want. You can hire as many people as you want. You can have as many soldiers as you want, build as many ships as you want when you can print money out of nothing. If if you're working on a gold standard, and if, uh, you know, basically you're matching gold for that paper, you have to be ever so careful how government spends. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we're not on a, and by the way, we are not proposing with all of this going across the nation and what we've started in Missouri back December 1st, this is not about replacing the dollar. So I need everyone to understand that. This is offering another alternative in case you don't want to deal with inflation as you know as much, or if you don't want to deal with the digital dollar as it comes out. But Kansas is, I'm sorry, go swinging back now. Yeah, I, I pulled it up here, and it looks like um, Kansas's bill, by the way, and that's another thing we got to do, is bring up bill numbers when we talk about what states and what bills. And this is HB. That stands for House Bill. And mm-hmm. most states do it this way. SB would be a, a Senate bill. So okay. in Kansas, this is filed as HB 2405. Okay. And they're actually going for legal tender. Yeah. So so that's what they're doing. And they're using the word specie. And that's important. I love that when I see uh, you know language like this. Because specie basically determines what gold and silver is. And, and when you put in the word specie, um, you know, it's easier to use gold backs. Right. So I bet that's so they're thinking about that. I mean, actually, so, as you go ahead. Well, and, and I read that and dug into it a little bit. Specie basically is saying that, that, that Kansas and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but Kansas will would, if this passes, value gold and silver uh, based upon the weight of and the purity. metal, not impurity. And it has mm-hmm. to be stamped, but it does not. It, that, but 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 that would include U.S. minted uh, uh, yes. gold and silver, but it wouldn't ex- it would not exclude other forms. So uh, hold on, I've got one around here somewhere. Here it is. So this ten ounce silver bar mm-hmm. that's stamped and mm-hmm. would be considered uh, money. And yeah, that's Kansas, correct. I mean, that's it's correct. stamped and it says it's point nine 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 nine. Okay. That's a big, that's a big key difference, like you said, and I wanted to make sure that I had that right, and and I think the viewers would be interested, uh, uh, interested in that species subject as well. Yep, and I want to say another thing too, HB 2405 does get rid of capital gains tax in in Kansas, because they also, just like Missouri, they have capital gains tax on gold and silver. They'll be getting rid of it with this bill. Um, It's, in that regard, it's somewhat similar to Missouri's bill. And I like to compare everything to Missouri's bill be- just because we filed first. I'm curious how many states are borrowing our language. And by the way, there's no copyright. If you want to borrow our language and you're in another state, you feel free to do so. In fact, it's an honor for us in Missouri when other states say, well, Missouri has a good idea. I like their language. We're going to borrow their language. That's a good thing, okay. by the way. Uh, so okay. we like to see that. Um Let's see. It doesn't look. Do they? Uh, are they doing a depository? I didn't see. I any don't see that here. Language about that now. Okay, gotcha. Um, and, and we're and we're going to do uh, another video where I want to talk to you about the the repository 
uh, mm -hmm. situation in Utah. A, yep. quick, a quick another video where we talk about is it UPMA? Is yes, that correct? in fact, okay. I'll do something better for you, Ron. Mm -hmm. How would you like to talk to a UPMA board member and do an oh, interview? Would, I'd love to talk to board members. That'd I'll set great. it up for you. I'll okay. set it up for you. His name is Charles Lewis. Uh, okay. So I'll tell you what, uh, after the show today, I'll go ahead and uh, make sure that he gets your information. Okay. And uh, awesome. he can call you. Okay. Right. So covering UPMA is a very important thing, which you're going to be doing probably, my guess is, yeah. is that you'll be talking to him about how bullion banks work. Okay. Number one. Number two, how an average person just like you and me can have an account with them right now, no matter what state you live in, you can actually have an account, you know, with UPMA. Okay. And then basically with that account, <clears throat> You know, basically, you can actually start transacting with a debit card. You can actually start spending your gold and silver. You can actually, quote unquote, start using gold and silver as money. Okay. Um, but but anyway, I don't want to give away all the and details. We're, you're right. And we're in, 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 in and I'm going to beg you when we're done with this, that we do a short five minute because I have some information I and I want to confirm it with you sure. about this UPMA. Well, Let's and, and I want to tell my audience this as well. I want to circle back to what's going on in Missouri. And you've got a big event coming up here on March mm -hmm. 7th. Do Pat, Pat Holland has been working uh, behind the scenes very, very diligently. I can tell you that from having interacted with him over the last three weeks uh, to get this legislation, to support this legislation in Missouri. Mm -hmm. Pat has an organization called the Missouri Freedom Initiative. Did I get That's that correct? correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so you can Google the Missouri Freedom Initiative uh, if you want to learn more about him. But I want to just give you some recognition as well that um, I know that you have been working tirelessly to support this legislation in Missouri. What's going on on March 7th? There's an event that you're holding that sounds very, very interesting. Tell my viewers what you're uh, what you're going to be up to you uh, in mid Missouri on March 7th. OK, we're going to turn off gold and silver for a second and introduce everyone <laughs> to a new concept called citizen activism. Okay. Uh, so this is what we do in the initiative. And what we do when we're working legislation in the state of Missouri, we will schedule what we call knock and shock. That's what okay. we actually call the events. That's when we go up to Jefferson City in large numbers and basically uh, go there with pre-printed information that I actually prepare in advance. And okay. uh, we'll have anywhere from 12 to 30 people show up generally. I would like okay. to have a bigger crowd than that. But by the way, if you guys have ever visited your state capitals, having 12 to 30 people show up to go office to office together as a group, that's almost unheard of, by the way. That's why we call it knock and shock. Go ahead. And, and and this is all a new concept to me and probably many of my viewers as well. <clears throat> as citizens of a state, you're legally allowed to do this? Going Absolutely. The okay. Absolutely. People, uh, you <clears throat> see, this is the, the problem. I'm not going to talk about this too long. I need to get in 20 seconds. Okay. Everything that happens in D.C. is theater. I, I swear to you, this is the truth. I have worked with D.C. for 20 uh, no, actually, going back to when I was 18 years old, um, it was in 2004, so we're talking almost 20 years ago, is when I, and I'm 51, is when the revelation hit me that it just wasn't real, what was going on in D.C. That can be a completely different uh, video at some point and how I came to that revelation. But, but here's the deal, gang. Your power, your power as an individual is in your state. It is not in the federal government. Very, very important distinction. So the old axiom, one man, you know, can can actually change the world, is actually at the state level, not at the federal level. Go ahead, that's Ron. Very, that's very interesting. I, yeah, and that makes sense. I've never thought about that. I imagine some of my viewers uh, maybe have heard that for the first time, but that makes mm -hmm. perfect perfect sense um if people want to join you on march 7th they can contact yep. you through the missouri freedom initiative absolutely website? yep okay. uh, mofree.org <clears throat> okay. uh, so if you go down and get on the email list you will actually get emails from us building up to this event so you have all the information necessary but 
basically, the knock and shock event is over gold and silver. SB100, that's what we're going to get done here in the House now. We've gone through the Senate. We've gone through the fire in the Senate, but we now have to go through the fire that is known as the Missouri House of Representatives. And uh, we're pros at this. We've been doing this for a long time. Those who want to join us, please do. This is very simple, uh, basically, and uh, details will be in the email, but basically we'll be meeting at Representative Dirk Deaton's office. And that's room number uh, 316. So that'd be third floor in the Missouri Capitol. So, uh, and uh, by the way, I mean, if you have never been an active citizen before, uh, please consider joining us because you will not be required to talk to a representative. Come and walk with the group and learn as we do the job. Um, it, you know, and then actually, this is a great, so many people um, literally have never done anything before and they come with our group to knock and shock and they learn how to actually be a citizen activist at the Capitol talking direct to their representation. And I, and, I, and I just want to throw this in there to any of my viewers, whether it's in Missouri or any other state. Uh, as I think about March 7th and what you may be doing that morning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to being in your state capital, walking around, uh, interacting, making, making a, difference, a difference, you would, you would 15 years from now, remember being at the state capitol uh, and, and, and being part of that event as opposed to, you know, sitting around your house watching Netflix. So maybe yep. it's a good idea to, to take some initiative and join the initiative, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And it's a, it's a sacrifice because there's going to be gas money involved. There's going to sure. be taking a day off of work. I get that. Uh, yeah. I do that, too. And I am not paid. There is no money in this organization. Uh, there is no way to make money in this organization. We are not lobbyists. We are literally a giant grassroots organization. And I'm sure that that, um, you know, frustrates some people up in Jeff City because we can't be tagged as lobbyists because there's no money in this. Yeah. Uh, and can I, so and Pat, Pat, can I, uh, uh, and I guess I'll edit this out if you're not okay with this. I just want to point out as well that you're not doing this, you're not part of, you know, all this work that you are, you are doing to get gold and silver recognized again, or regained or reclaimed by Missouri citizens uh, as legal tender, all the work you're doing, you're not getting rich off this. You're nope. not uh, paid for doing this. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you uh, maybe you're gonna become famous now that you're on Ron's basement. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Well, a little famous anyway, mm -hmm. but you're not doing this for you're 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 doing this because of what you feel in your heart and not uh, because you're trying to fill up your pocketbook. That's is correct. That, is that there? Okay. Yeah, I've been doing the Missouri Freedom Initiative technically, technically since 2020 is when we started yeah. the organization. Actually, yeah. it was building in 2019, but in 2020, we put it to work. OK, and so that's how long we've been doing it. There's no money in doing this. Okay. at all and i mean okay. zilch so yes right. i put my own money from my own bank account in my gas tank right. in the okay. car that i own and i'd have to take time off of work but that is absolutely correct so that's pretty that's pretty awesome pat and i and i can tell you i know that right now there are people in the united states in missouri and all over the world that i, I would imagine also think that's pretty awesome so uh, you bet. Hats, hats off to you Thank you. And by the way, you guys need to schedule knock and shocks in your other states. I can't yeah. go to other states and do that, but I will tell you there is more exciting news coming because I'm working with uh, Charles Lewis, the very man that I've uh, said you can interview with a UPMA bank or not. You can interview. You can interview anyone you want, but I'll hook you up with it. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, I'll be working with him to get silver and gold recognized as legal tender in the state of Arkansas very soon. And that wow. will require a trip down to Little Rock because we'll okay. be meeting with the treasurer and a senator and a representative as well. So I'm working with other states, too. Uh, yes, Missouri is my state. I love my state. I need the legislation to go through in my state. But I also recognize that other states have to have this, too, for a lot of different reasons. And so I am definitely helping out other states, gang. Um, and I'm, uh, I, it's in my interest to make sure that other states get this, too. 
if you ever want to take it, by the way, two or three years from now, you know, thankfully, you know, we're here and everything's somewhat okay right now, two or three years from now may not be the same story. And then you'll be very grateful that you have another option for transactions <coughs> rather than the dollar. I don't think the dollar is going to be doing well. And, yeah. and in fact, I even think by the end of this year, the dollar is going to take a, a pretty big hit because of the BRIC nations. Well, and, 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 and we're going to wrap this video up now, but I want to tell my viewers, they're going to hear more about that because I'm going to twist your arm right now to spend eight more minutes with me in a separate video to talk about one about the U.S. dollar and one about what we know about UPMA uh, kind of prior to my conversation with Charles. So you bet. Uh, look, guys, if you want more information, go to the Missouri Freedom In Initiative website, right? Yep, um, mofree.org, mofree.org. Mofree.org. Uh, you can make a difference. That's what I learned today from Pat here. You can make more of a difference on a state level as opposed to a federal level, and you can make a difference in your state. Uh, you know, take some initiative, join the initiative. That's my new tagline. Thanks, Pat. I appreciate Thank it. You. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you. We'll okay. see you next All time, right. man. All right. All right. Bye-bye.